Nintendo Wii here and today I'll be showing you my top 10 Sega Saturn games. Here's number 10, this is Pandemonium for the Sega Saturn. Okay, here's the game. It's much like a Mario game, you have to run and jump on enemies. It also reminds me a bit of Klonoa with, with its um, 2D gameplay but 3D graphics. The camera spins around and stuff as you go through the stages. I'll show you an example of that in a bit. You can either choose to play as this character here or the Jester. Nice design. As you can see here, the camera spins around, but the gameplay is always fixed in a 2D thing. Now, there's one reason why I brought this game in the first place. I only got it recently on holiday. And the reason is, about 10 years ago, I, I was in an adventure play area, you know, like, um, like Wacky Warehouse or something like that, but it was pirate themed. I, I remember it very clearly. It was a pirate themed game, like, play area. And they had this game on, on display on the PlayStation 1. And, and I just remember being in that playroom, playing, playing on this, and I remember the bit where you jumped on the watermelons, and I saw this on holiday, and I was like, oh my god, that was the game that I played when I was a kid in the pirate adventure play area. And I have no idea why I remembered that, but I did. So I brought it, and I'm really pleased that I did, and it's exactly how I remember it, which is just fantastic. And that's why this is number 10 on my list. And now you probably all think that I'm mad, but I don't mind. Number 9 is Wipeout. Okay, here's Wipeout. Most people have probably played this on the PlayStation. It's the same as that version, just on the Sega Saturn instead. Really fast racing game. <coughs> Based on F-Zero, most likely. Nintendo's um, futuristic racer. It's really good. The controls are a bit floaty. Some people can't get used to them, but if you can get used to the controls, it's a really fun racing game. And it does get really fast. So if you like games like Extreme G or F-Zero, definitely check this game out, it's really good. It's one of them games that you really get absorbed into, and it doesn't even feel like you're playing it after a while. Thanks to the, the trance music and the smooth gameplay. Number 8 is Virtual Fighter 2 for the Sega Saturn. Okay, this is Virtual Fighter 2. It plays pretty much the same as every other fighting game. You've got your punches, you've got kicks, you've got block and you can uh, throw opponents. Using the Saturn controller is nice because the, the buttons are really responsive. Five, one, ready, go. It's got fairly good graphics for a Sega Saturn game. It is a bit slow compared to some of today's fighters, but it still plays well. It's definitely no Song Calibur. It's probably the best fighting game that's available on the Saturn. Okay, number seven is Sega Rally Championship. I'm sure most people have played this game in the arcade at least once. This was a really popular rally game by Sega, and they ported it to the Sega Saturn. Sega Rally Championship. And it's pretty much arcade perfect. One, go. Now the graphics might look terrible, but back in the day these these were incredible graphics. It's really really smooth to control. And you can also use the steering wheel to play this game with, the Sega Saturn wheel, which makes it even more fun. Here's the Sega Saturn steering wheel. As you can see, I haven't used it in quite a while. It's a bit dusty, so I might just have to clean this off and then give it a go on Sega Rally. Number six is Sonic Jam. Okay, this is Sonic Jam. It's a collection of the four Sonic games on the Sega Mega Drive. You've got Sonic 1, Sonic 2, Sonic 3, and Sonic and & Knuckles. And you can use the Sonic & Knuckles cart to lock on to any of these other games. So, in theory, considering that the Sonic games are the best games on the Mega Drive, this game is four times as good as anything on Sega's previous console. I 
and this is number six on my list. So it just shows how good the Sega sound is. Also, as well as the four Sonic games, there's an extra game on here called Sonic World, which is a 3D area where Sonic can run around and look at all the bonus features in the game. Number five is Croc, Legend of the Gobos. Okay, this is Croc. He used to be a really popular game character. Although there's something going wrong with my game, and Croc seems to have no head. Or just eyes, and the lava's all flaky. What the hell's going on? Ah. Okay, it's usually a good game, but there seems to be something wrong. I'm not really sure what's happened. Yeah. It's not supposed to be like this! Wow, what's going on? I think Croc's upset that he hasn't had a new game as well. Number four is Panzer Dragoon 2, Zowie. Okay, this is Panzer Dragoon. Probably the most graphically impressive game on the Sega Saturn. The game plays a bit like Star Fox, it's an on-rail shooter, but the difference is, instead of flying, flying through space, you're on the back of a giant dragon. You can turn the camera around by pressing the L and R buttons, and there's a radar in the corner that shows you where the enemies are. Panzer Dragoon 1. Okay, this is the first Panzer Dragoon, the prequel to Panzer Dragoon 2 that we just saw. It's more or less the same, same sort of gameplay. As you can see, the graphics are really nice. It plays much the same, you hold down the attack button to lock onto enemies, and then shoot with the A button. It's got really nice orchestrated music. Really action packed game, reminds me a lot of the old Star Fox games. It's a 2D platformer. This was actually one of the first ever 3D platformers because the background is a 3D and so is the area that you walk on. It's really fun, it's a really fast game. It reminds me a bit of Toy Story World. And he plays this clockwork knight who has a key in his hand. And to kill the enemies, you wind them up until they pop, which I think is a really nice idea. Or you can just hit them once to stun them, and some, some enemies you only need to hit once with the key. And the way, the way the 3D acts with the game is really good as well, like, them houses just fell out of the background. And 
one's going to cover the hole so you can jump over it. Sega Saturn game probably won't come as a surprise to anyone. Of course, it's Nights into Dreams. So what can be said about Nights into Dreams that I haven't already mentioned in my previous videos? Nothing much really, except this is possibly one of Sega's, if not Sega's best game of all time. It's just fantastic. The story's really good, the variety in the levels is just superb. You really can't fault it at all. It's the perfect arcade type game. Even Shigeru Miyamoto, the creator of Donkey Kong and Mario and Zelda, he's even said if there's one game he wishes that he'd made, it was Nights into Dreams. That's just how good this game is. And if you haven't played it, get get a Sega Saturn just so you can play this game. It really is that good. I got a Sega Saturn just for this game, and I was not disappointed. I think there is a remake of it on the PS2, but I'm not sure how easy that is to get hold of. And if you've got Billy Hatcher and the Giant Egg for the Game Boy Advance, you can also um, unlock a Game Boy Advance version of this game. But it's very basic, it's not a fun game at all, it's just like a demo. Then once you've finished your stage, you get an overall rank for that level, and then you go and fight the boss for the world. Which in this case is a giant fat person that you have to throw across lots of different rooms, smashing your way through the building. The game's got really nice graphics, it's a really strange style. It really sets the game apart from anything else, really. It's very unique. 